the atheist, the most fleeting thought is timeless. A single hair's enough to stir the sea. Shutaku. I once knew a man who was an atheist. Actually, he and his wife were both atheists. Jules and Lillian Fields. They were from Nyack, New York. I met them in San Miguel, Mexico. They invited me over to their apartment for dinner one evening. It was all vegetarian and good too. I brought them a bottle of Mexican wine. Jules had escaped from the Nazis just before the war broke out. He and Lillian fled to Belgium then Holland and France, and finally to the States. He had been in the diamond industry, and once over here had helped many Jews to escape, forging passports for them and illegal papers. Jules was a little guy, five feet four inches tall, and his wife Lillian about the same, maybe an inch or two shorter. But whereas Jules was talkative and looked like he had just eaten the cat, his wife was silent, hardly ever uttered a word, and seemed to be there just to hang around him. They were like Mutt and Jeff, inseparable. Wherever one went, there was the other, only both short, a rounder and more compact version. I liked Jules and Lillian. We sat many an evening in the Hardeen, the main square, on the black wrought iron benches with the white droppings, watching the pigeons settle down in the trees for the night and listening to their wonderful songs. We always tried to find a bench, not directly under a tree, but if there wasn't one, we sat down anywhere and took our chances. Jules told me he didn't believe in God. It was destiny and God has nothing at all to do with it. Finster a muzzle dark luck, or muzzle tov, good luck. That's all there is to it. Jules had sparse, light brown hair and brown eyes. His wife was still good looking at 83. Jules was 87. Three or four winters, I met them in San Miguel. And as I said, sat with them on the black wrought iron benches with the bird droppings and just kibitzed about life in general and nothing in particular. Then a couple of winters went by and Jules and Lillian weren't there. I wondered if anything had happened to them. Then all at once there they were again, sprite and lively as ever, although Jules looked a little thin and Lillian had put on weight, not much though, and was still as good looking as ever with her full short blonde hair and brown eyes. They were a lovely couple. I could see just how much Lillian loved him and he her. How are you Jules, I said gleefully happy to see him after a two-year hiatus. I'm fine now, he answered, but last winter I was very sick, almost died in fact. I lost 45 pounds and didn't think I was going to recover. What was wrong, Jules, I asked. I had a rare blood disease. I don't know how I got it. All of a sudden, I couldn't eat anymore, had no appetite at all, and lost 45 pounds. I was literally at death's door. 
had even given up hope and didn't know what to do. What happened, I asked. You're still here, as I see. Yes, Jules said. One evening, my daughter had friends over for dinner, and she told them about me. She said, my father is very ill. He's taken all kinds of blood tests, but nobody can find anything wrong. He's getting thinner and thinner, weaker and weaker, and we don't know what to do. Have your father send me his blood work, my daughter's friend said. And so I did, Jules continued. My daughter's friend was a hematologist, one of four doctors in the entire world who specialized in certain specific rare blood diseases. He discovered that I had one of the rare blood diseases he specialized in and prescribed medication for me. He said the medication would cure my disease, but once cured, I would have to wean myself back off the medication very slowly. The process would take seven months, and so it did. The medication cured me, I got better, I began to have an appetite again, and I put back on almost all my weight. Today I'm fine. And you still don't believe in God? I said to Jules. What's God got to do with it? Jules asked. You mean to tell me, I said, that your daughter just happened to have a dinner to which she invited friends, and one of them just happened to be a hematologist, and that hematologist just happened to specialize in rare blood diseases, and you just happened to have one of the rare blood diseases in which he specialized, he being one of only four doctors in the entire world, and he just happened to diagnose your disease and cure you. And you think that God had nothing at all to do with it? No, God had nothing at all to do with it, because there is no God. It was all just a matter of chance. I laughed and remembered the old Hasidic tale about the Rebbe who asked his disciple, where is God? The disciple answers, I don't know, Rebbe, where is God? The Rebbe says to the disciple, God is wherever man lets him in. I thought it through even one step further and added to myself, and even if man does not let God in, God is still there because God is everywhere. <laughs> it's a good one.